Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, here with a quick tutorial for you guys today. Um, this tutorial was by request. Um, I was asked if I could make a video showing how I made these paper clips. So they're just altered paper clips using shank buttons. There was a question in the Junk Journal Junkies about different ways to use a large bag of shank buttons and um, this is what I came up with. Um, I don't sew or make jewelry or anything like that so um, other than making closures with shank buttons the only other thing I do is make these paper clips and I've been doing that for a while. Um, it's a really easy tutorial and I'll show you how to make it. There's two different ways to make it. Um, what I'm calling a short and a long version. Um, this would be the short version. Here's the long. Um, one kind of sticks out over the edge of the page more than the others do. Um, so the short version will stick out over the top of your journals almost with the full flower. Oh, I've got a piece of card stock here I can show you. So this is what's the shorter version and it'll stick out over the edge almost all the way. And then um, as for the longer version, it'll get a little bit closer. Um, this one has a really large flower on it, so it looks almost the same size. But if it's a smaller flower, it'll be closer than this one. You can see it goes down, it goes into your page a little bit further. Um, so what you'll need for this is just some regular standard paper clips. I don't recommend um, the tiny paper clips. They don't really work really well for flowers, and these buttons are huge, so it's a little ungainly. And um, I use glossy accents for the glue, but you can use any other um, sturdy adhesive. Eileen's works really well. Um, I've seen people make this with uh, hot glue. What you could do, I wouldn't personally, cause I just don't feel like hot glue will last as long, um, especially with you know people pulling the paper clips off the page fairly frequently. Um, you'll need shank buttons, some flowers. This is just a regular pack of white pot flowers that I got from the paper studio at Hobby Lobby. And um, I stamped them for the project that I'm working on, but you can leave yours plain or spray them or coffee, tea stain them, whatever you're doing. Um, and a hole punch. I have a crocodile, but you can use a standard hole punch, of course. Um, to make the short version, You'll need to take your flowers and um, what you'll want to do is punch whatever pieces you decide to make the um, inside and just don't punch the back piece. And this will help the flower um, go over the end of the shank button easier. Gonna line it up with the hole that's already there in the flower. If you aren't using loose flowers like this, you could um, use any already made flower and just uh, pull the center out. And usually um, the hole will be large enough for you to put the button over it, but I just don't like to run the risk of tearing my flowers, so I make the hole bigger, um, which you can too. Or if you're braver, you could leave them unpunched. Um, to make the short version, really the only difference is that um, you'll stick the button through the back end of the paper clip and you want to make sure it's the back end, not this open end. I've done it incorrectly before so that's why I'm saying it now. Um, cause if you do it that way it won't work. And um, before locking it in there, what I like to do is add a little bit of glue around the shank part of the button just to kind of hold the paper clip in place. And then um, I have some eyelash trim here that I've been embellishing my flowers with. Um, so I'll just make it into a little ring and a little bit of the glue on top of the paper clip because that's what it's going to rest on. And set that down. Um, I don't really worry about making it too perfect, 
because you know it's eyelash trim I want it to stick out everywhere anyways but I do like to make sure that um, the ends are sticking kind of in and then um, I'll add some glue to the top flower and to my middle flower and then um, I'll add a buttload more onto the back piece. And so you just want to carefully push your flower over the shank part. Um, if you go too fast, it'll rip the paper of the flower, but if you have a sturdier flower, then you know, put some muscle in it. And then I like to turn it over to see what I'm working with. Plus I stamped some words on it and I want them all to face the same way. I don't know if you guys get worried about your words facing the right direction or not, but I can't stand it when they don't, so. I'm gonna push this down and then this back piece is gonna act as like the cover for the shank button so you can't see that through the back because that's not very pretty. And I'm gonna put that on and then I'm gonna press all around but not through to kind of lock it in and then you know it'll help give the flower a little bit of shape. Um, glossy accents takes a while to dry so um, you're going to want to set this aside and not just um, attach it to your journal or anything anytime soon um, and let it dry completely. And to make the longer version it's the same thing. You get your flowers picked out um, punch a hole in the middle ones. And pick out your button. That's way too big. I'll do that one. I like that one. And, um, you're going to want to thread your button uh, onto the paper clip. I like to go from the middle. You can go from the outside. I just always go from the middle of the button and work that all the way through to the other side. Like this. And um, I'm going to put a little bit of glue into the buttonhole. Um, I do that so that after it dries, the paper clip isn't kind of free flying in there like so. And then um, I'm going to just pre-glue my pieces. And I've um, made this tutorial about four times now. Just been tripping all over my words all day today. So I have a lot of paper clips ready to go for the journal that I'm working on which is great. Hopefully this is the last time I have to make this video. I'm put the lid back on my glossy accents here. And grab my little piece of eyelash trim. This time I'm going to um, put the top piece on first. And just carefully work that in there. And I'm going to open up my glue again because I want to add that eyelash trim underneath this first layer this time. So I'm going to put a little glue down, clean off the top, lock that back up. I've been crafting all day and my fingers are sticky from all the glue that I've been using just to make this video. And they're inky from all the stamping I've been doing. That's just not helping. I think that's pretty good. And then I'll make sure we're going in the right direction here. And same thing. 
gonna push this down. Make sure I'm happy with the way that looks. And then take this back piece and put that in. Um, There's a lot of different things you could do with this. You don't have to add the eyelash trim if you don't want. You could actually put a charm through the hole of the button before you put on your back piece. Um, and have a little piece sticking out here. You could add ribbon inside and then put on your back piece or make the ribbon your back piece. Um, you could punch out circles or um, cut out wavy circles and make the same thing without having to buy um, flowers for it if you don't want to spend the money on it. Um, you could even do this with flowers from the Dollar Tree. Um, they have a lot of little tiny flowers that look like this that you could tear apart. Um, and that's how you make the longer version. Hopefully um, this tutorial helps people see how to make these and um, you guys will start making your own be looking forward to seeing anybody who makes those. Um, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.